The World Health Organization published an oral health report in 2003 indicating that approximately 85% of adults have some form of gum disease or periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is an infection of the gums and bone that surrounds the roots of your teeth. Most people who have periodontal disease aren't even aware of it. It's rarely painful, especially in the earlier stages of gingivitis and early periodontitis. One of the main causes of periodontal disease is the accumulation of bacteria and food debris known as plaque. Plaque is a very sticky film that adheres to the rough surfaces on your teeth and the roots of your teeth. You are supposed to remove plaque every day by brushing and flossing. If you fail to remove all of the plaque from your teeth every single day, the minerals in your saliva will harden the plaque, turning it into calculus, which is also known as tartar. Once tartar has formed on your teeth, there's absolutely nothing you can do at home to remove it. A toothbrush and floss are completely powerless against it. It takes the professional help of a skilled dental hygienist to remove the tartar from the roots of your teeth. If it is not removed, it spreads down on the root surface and releases toxins and poisons into the gum tissues, causing them to become inflamed. This early stage of gum disease is known as gingivitis. The bacteria that cause periodontal disease thrive in this environment, and if left untreated, will continue to spread along the roots of the teeth, infecting the bone that holds the teeth in place. Some warning signs of periodontal disease may include soft, swollen, or tender gums, bleeding gums when brushing or flossing, persistent bad breath, gums shrinking away from the teeth, loose teeth, changes in the spaces between your teeth which indicate changes in the underlying bone. A person can also have periodontal disease and experience none of these symptoms. The roots of your teeth extend into the bone of your upper and lower jaws. When everything is healthy, the bone levels are high around the necks of the teeth and even throughout the mouth. A sulcus is the space between your teeth and your gums. A healthy sulcus is one, two, or three millimeters deep. When plaque and tartar invade a healthy sulcus and it becomes deeper than three millimeters, we no longer call it a sulcus, we call it a pocket. Pockets are bad. We need to eliminate pockets, otherwise the bone will become infected and you may start losing teeth. This is a periodontal probe. It is divided into three millimeter increments and used to measure the spaces between your teeth and gums. During your free TLC consultation, we will use a periodontal probe similar to this one to measure the depths of each sulcus and pocket. When plaque and tartar invade a healthy sulcus, toxins and poisons are released causing the gum tissues to become inflamed and the bone levels to fall. This is how a pocket forms. The readings are taken from the base of the pocket where the gum is attached to the top of the gum line. Readings of one, two, or three millimeters are good. Readings of four and five millimeters are bad and readings of six millimeters and above are really bad. These are healthy gums. They are tight around the necks of the teeth and there are no pockets. The bone level is high around the necks of the teeth and even throughout the mouth. This is severe periodontitis. The gums are puffy and swollen. They are not tight around the necks of the teeth and there's deep pocketing. In general, the deeper the pocketing, the greater the severity of the periodontal disease. Notice the formation of heavy tartar deposits on the roots of the teeth. Notice also that the bone level is not high around the necks of the teeth and it is very uneven as compared to the healthy side. Bleeding and pus are two other signs of periodontal disease. Healthy gums do not bleed, nor do they exude pus. Diseased gums bleed and really diseased gums exude pus. So here's how we diagnose periodontal disease. Periodontal probe ratings greater than three millimeters in depth, bleeding upon probing and sometimes pus too, red, swollen, puffy gums, especially between the teeth, tartar formation on the roots of teeth, and bone loss visible on x-rays. So what do you do once the severity of your gum disease has been determined? Believe it or not, treating gum disease is as simple as removing the tartar and preventing new tartar from reforming on the roots of your teeth. First, we start with a procedure known as scaling and root planing. A routine cleaning removes plaque and tartar from above the gum line. Root planing removes plaque and tartar from below the gum line. We typically numb the gums before root planing so that you are completely comfortable. Then, using special instruments, we carefully and meticulously plane the surfaces of the root. The goal of scaling and root planing is to eliminate the source of the infection by removing the plaque and tartar and eliminating the toxins and poisons from the root surfaces of your teeth. It's very effective for four and five millimeter pockets as well as the occasional six millimeter pockets. Once the source of the infection has been removed and the root surfaces are smooth again, your gums begin to heal. 
because there are no longer any toxins or poisons being released into the gum tissues, they begin to reattach to the root surface and the swelling subsides. Sometimes we will spread scaling and root planning over several appointments. This enables us to check the progress of your healing and fine tune your home care efforts. Home care is the most important element to proper healing. Since floss and the bristles of your toothbrush can only reach about one to two millimeters below the gum line, brushing and flossing alone are not enough to control periodontal disease. We will discuss your new home care regimen during your free TLC consultation. In more severe cases of periodontal disease, many dental offices will refer you to a periodontist for periodontal flap surgery. During periodontal flap surgery, the periodontist will make an incision along the gum line and resect a flap of gum tissue. This gives the periodontist direct visualization of and better access to the tartar on the root surfaces. After the tartar has been removed from the root surfaces, stitches are placed to aid in the healing process. They are then removed about seven to 10 days later. People come to our office because we offer non-invasive and minimally invasive alternatives to periodontal flap surgery. In our office, we treat the more severe cases with a laser instead of using scalpels and stitches. The laser selectively separates the diseased gum tissue from the healthy gum tissue, leaving the healthy gum tissue perfectly intact. It also kills stubborn bacteria that reside deep within the periodontal pocket. This laser microsurgery is less invasive than periodontal flap surgery, which leads to faster healing, less bleeding, and less swelling. Before treating you with the laser, we fit you with special glasses and then numb the area to be treated. Using a soft sweeping motion, we gently remove the diseased gum tissue from the infected periodontal pocket. The narrow beam of light only removes diseased gum tissue. This gives us extremely precise control, which means faster healing and less pain for you. I want to make it perfectly clear that there is no cure for periodontal disease, but you can control it. Controlling periodontal disease is as simple as removing the tartar from the roots of the teeth and preventing new tartar from reforming on the root surfaces. Many patients become frustrated because they cannot seem to get their periodontal disease under control. There are two main reasons for this. The first reason is that it only takes 12 to 72 hours for the bacteria on your teeth to turn into tartar. Brushing and flossing twice a day or every 12 hours is supposed to prevent the formation of tartar on the roots of your teeth. So why doesn't it? Well, that's the second reason periodontal disease is so difficult to control. Your floss and the bristles of your toothbrush can only reach about one to two millimeters into a sulcus or periodontal pocket. If you have a six millimeter pocket, you're missing four to five millimeters of the pocket when you brush and floss. Brushing and flossing alone simply cannot remove all of the bacteria that causes periodontal disease. You need something more effective than a toothbrush and floss if you want to control periodontal disease. During your free TLC consultation, we will show you exactly what you need to do in order to reach down into the periodontal pockets way beyond the limits of your toothbrush and floss. We will show you how you can effectively eliminate the bacteria that cause periodontal disease and prevent the formation of tartar on the roots of your teeth so that you can effectively control your periodontal disease.